bless his name on this morning hallelujah we honor and give him praise on this morning god is so great and he is greatly to be praised lift up your voice and give him praise on this morning hallelujah 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 we bless his name we bless his name hallelujah we bless his name he's alpha and omega hallelujah hallelujah and we bless his name come on lift up your voice and bless god on today hallelujah god you're so great you're so great you're so great you're so great hallelujah hallelujah come on and put your hands together hallelujah
You're the same yesterday, today, and forever. You are the same yesterday, today, and forever. <laughs> you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. Mm, if you did it before, you're gonna do it again because you are. If he did it for you, he's gonna do it for me because he is. Oh, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So I'll praise your name. I'll praise your name. Hallelujah. Because you're the same. Hallelujah. I still believe that you're able to do, hallelujah, exceeding and abundantly above all that I could ask or even think. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. You're the same God, hallelujah, that's able to do it for me. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and say, if he did it for you, he's going to do it for me. Because he's the same God. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, oh. God is able to do just what he said he would do. He's going to fulfill every promise.
those shackles and set you free. <laughs> He's able to bear your burdens. He's a heavy load sharer. Hallelujah. <laughs> He's able to heal your body. Yes, He is. Yes, He is. Yes, He is. He's able. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! 
Aleluia! Aleluia!
play for right now, but I'm gonna get on out of the way so we can get this word going. Okay. Not a second of another minute, not an hour of another day, but at this moment with my arms outstretched, Lord, we need you to make a way as you have done so many times before through a window or an open door i stretch my hands to thee come rescue me we need you right away i need you
you've allowed us to come into your house God to come into your presence God we ask that you touch us right now God send your word right now God to every heart and mind God God we need your word God we need your help today God touch each and every one God those that are in the building those that are listening online God let something be said that they can take with them God that will carry them through God that will carry them over God that will bring them out hallelujah and let your name get the glory hallelujah nevertheless not my will God but your will be done hallelujah hallelujah and we praise your name we give you glory right now we honor you God for the word that's about to feed our soul God we honor you right now God for the praises that we'll give you for the glory that we'll give you God for how we magnify your name and witness that you are God and there's none like you hallelujah in Jesus name hallelujah now where my mouth God give me what to say God speak into my ears that I may hear what you will have to say to the church and God I decrease that you may increase God we glorify you and magnify your holy name in Jesus mighty name thank God amen as you take your seats bless the name of Jesus you can't praise him enough you can't lift him too high for men to see come on and give him glory hallelujah hallelujah glory 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 hallelujah Glory to your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I do give honor to God who is the head of my life. To our pastor, my beloved over there, the one whom my soul loves. Hallelujah. Pastor Andre Parham. To all the elders, Mother Bradford. To all the men and women of God. To you, 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 and you. Hallelujah. If you're in the presence of the Lord, I give honor to you. Hallelujah. I thank God for being here today. I'm not going to be long. Let me say this. I endeavor not to be long because I'm my daddy's child. But I'm going to try my best to give you what God say and nothing else. Hallelujah. If you'll go with me to 1 Samuel 17, we're going to hopefully do a lot of reading and a little bit of talking. And God going to get the glory and we're going to go home. Hallelujah. 1 Samuel 17, and it's a familiar story. <laughs> Excuse me. A familiar passage of uh, of victory. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank God for the word. Thank God for God's spirit in his presence. Hallelujah. First Samuel 17. I'm going to read several verses. I'm going to skip around a little bit. I'm going to start at verse 4 through verse 12. I know it seemed like a lot, but it won't be once I read it. And then we'll skip to 31 and through 33, and then we'll skip to 49 through 51. When you have it, say amen. Praise God. Thank God for swift reading. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. 1 Samuel 17 and 4 reads, And there went out a champion out of the camp of the Philistines 
named Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits and a span, and he had an helmet of brass upon his head, and he was armed with a coat of mail, and the weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of brass. And he had greaves of brass upon his legs, and a target of brass between his shoulders. And the staff of his spear was like a weaver's beam. And his spear's head weighed 600 shekels of iron, and one bearing a shield went before him. And he stood and cried out unto the armies of Israel, these are God's people, and said unto them, Why are ye come out to set your battle in array? Am I not a Philistine, and ye servants of Saul? Choose you a man for you, and let him come down to me. If he be able to fight with me, and to kill me, then we will be your servants. But if I prevail against him, and kill him, then shall ye be our servants, and serve us. And the Philistines said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that, that we may fight together. Then Saul and all of Israel heard those words of the Philistine. They were dismayed and greatly afraid. But David was a son of the Ephratite of Bethlehem, Judah, whose name was Jesse. And he had eight sons. And the man went among them for an old man in the days of Saul. I'm going to skip down to verse 31. And it reads, And when the words were heard which David spake, they rehearsed them before Saul. And he sent for him. And David said to Saul, Let no man's heart fail because of him. Thy servant will go and fight with this Philistine. And Saul said to David, Thou art not able to go against the Philistine to fight with him, for there are but a youth and a man of war, from, and he a man of war from his youth. We're going to skip over to 49. And it reads, And David put his hand on, in his bag and took thence a stone and slang it, and smote the Philistine in his forehead, that the stone sunk into his forehead, and he fell upon his face to the earth. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and a stone, and smote the Philistine, and slew him. But there was no sword in the hand of David. Therefore David ran and stood upon the Philistine, and took his sword, and drew it out of the sheath thereof, and slew him, and cut off his head therewith. And when the Philistines saw their champion was dead, they fled. May God add a blessing to the readers, hearers, doers of his holy word. Today I want to talk about something God can use. I, I love talking about David because he's just such a versatile character. More than once in the Bible, he's been the underdog. They've um, overlooked him. They misjudged him. He was anointed to be king, and when they came to anoint him, they didn't think he was who he was supposed to be. But I thank God for the spirit of David. David was Jesse's baby boy. And nowadays, you know, we pet our babies. We, uh, our babies get special treatment. But back in those days, he didn't get that. He just was. He wasn't a favorite. He wasn't special. He wasn't spoiled. He just was. But this scripture, this passage of scripture that I've written has not, is not starting off talking about David. It's talking about the giant Goliath, a giant Philistine champion. Not just a man, not just a Philistine, a giant Philistine. Not just a giant Philistine, a giant Philistine champion. Which means he's been through some things, he's won some wars, he's gone through some things, and he's proven himself. He's described as more than nine feet tall. My God, I'm five, two and a half, so he almost two of me. That's a big man. Covered in a brass helmet and brass armor, weighing more than 125 pounds. Just the armor was weighing 125 pounds. And with a spearhead, just the head weighing about 15 pounds. That's a big man. Now, a normal sword usually weighs about two and a half to four and a half pounds. So if just the head of his sword weighed 15 pounds, that's a big man. So first time he starts talking about I'm going to call him Big G. We're going to call the lie Big G. Okay, so first time he talks about Big G challenging the armies of God to a battle. First of all, he know already he's nine feet tall. How many of y'all know somebody nine feet tall? Nobody. But he want to call for one man out of the other armies to fight against him. He knew he was already at an advantage. 
He felt like he was going to win the war with no, with no challenge. He felt like it was already in his hands. But God had something that he could use. Then it goes for us to talk about the challenge and how the challenge was. You know, he said, well, if you send somebody out to fight me, then, and they kill me, then we're going to serve you. And then if, you, if I kill them, then you'll be my servants and we'll serve you. He put some extra on it. That's how the enemy does. He put some extra on it. He want to rub it in. I already got the advantage. I'm already nine feet tall. I just slapped you down and you gone. So now we got a whole nation full of servants. But he, that's how he does. He puts some extra on it because he want to make you feel bad. He want to scare you. But God is not in fear. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So he gives them this, uh, you know, this challenge. And the conditions, you know, we, I gave you the conditions. And then he put a cherry on top and said, this day, I defy the armies of Israel. Not only am I challenging you, but I'm telling you, I'm coming up against you. I'm coming for you. Uh -huh. I mean to do you some harm. I'm disrespecting you. That's what, he, that's what he said. I defy the armies of Israel. I mean to do you some harm. You ain't going to get nothing out of this. You might as well come on, come on, come on. But he had that bully spirit, and that's how they do. They make you feel like they're taller than you. They want to pick on you. I want to talk over your head. I've been short all my life, so people try to do that. But I got something God could use, I'm telling you. <laughs> Sometimes I use something that, that God didn't give me. Well, maybe he gave it to me. Yeah, he gave it to me because he brought me here. He brought me out all right. Thank you, Lord. But I, I, I've witnessed this bully spirit. And sometimes people use it in the church. They use it in the world all the time. They want to use their power against you. They want to use something that they feel like they got over your head to make you feel less than, like you're unable, like you're not qualified, like you can't do stuff. But you have something that God can use. So when the Israelites heard this, now he talked about that he did this every day, morning and evening, for 40 days. When I read that, I was like, really? 40 days, morning and evening? Let me tell you what I thought about my brother. You know how we get on the prayer line at 9 a.m. and 6 p.m. in the morning and the evening? While the devil is out there making plans in the morning and the evening, while he's out there challenging us, we making plans for his defeat. We making plans for his demise. He think we don't know what he's doing. But while he's out there morning and evening doing what he's going to do, we out there with something that God can use to kill him. So I, there is significance in the 40, though. I want to say that there is significance in the 40. Because the Bible talks about 40 so many times. It's mentioned 146 times up to 149 times, depending on translation in the Bible. There's a reference. And 40 symbolizes a time of testing, trial, and triumph. Which, you know, if you know the ending of the story, if you know how to turn out, that sounds about right. But it symbolizes testing. The Israelites wandered in the wilderness for 40 days. Moses stayed on Mount Sinai for 40 days getting the Ten Commandments. God flooded the earth with rain day and night for 40 days so he could recreate this thing. Jonah warned the people of Nineveh for 40 days. Ezekiel laid on his right side for 40 days for Judah's sin. Jesus fasted for 40 days and nights before he was tempted by the devil. And then he appeared 40 days after his resurrection. So there is significance to this 40. All the time the devil is planning, God got a way of, of uh, escape. God is working that thing out. The devil feels like he's just coming up with something. He just started at the beginning day of 40. But God was working beforehand on the 40 for the triumph in the end. So here we are with these two armies ready to fight. And then at the end of the, of the 12th verse, it says, uh, no, of the 11th verse, when Saul and all Israel heard these words of the Philistines, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. Let me tell you something. That's not something God can use. God can't use folks who won't stand up. God can't use folks who, who's shaking in their boots. God can't use folks who's scared to speak out. The Bible says, cry loud, spare not. God can't use people who are not willing to go out 
God can't use people who ain't willing to do what he asked them to do. If you're shaking in your boots, you might as well put on something else. If you're shaking in the boots, take them off. Because God's not going to be able to use you in those boots. Fear is of the devil. And again, God has not given us the spirit of fear. So here comes little old teenage lunch boy. What, I'm going to say our Uber Eats. Little David. We got Big G. That's, that's one of the main characters. And we're going to call David Little David. That's what we're going to call him, Little David. Because that's what everybody looked at him. When he came down, his brother told him, what you doing down here? You just came to see the fight. You ain't about no business. But he been sent on assignment by his fathers to maintain and sustain them. But the Bible also talks about before he came down, before he went back to look at the sheep, to take care of the sheep, he was already down there bearing Saul's armor. He had already had some experience and some insight of what was going on. So while, and, and the devil does that, he uses our own people to discourage us. God has put us on assignment to do stuff, and sometimes we don't even realize the extent of the assignment, but we just being obedient to what God told us to do at this moment. He just told us to come to church today, but you might need to speak a word to somebody. You might need to lay hands on somebody. Somebody might need your hug. Somebody might need some words of encouragement. But God has assignment for you. And you're just being obedient to what he told you to do. And when you get there, then he'll move you a little further. But, God, but the devil sometimes will use our own people to try to discourage us. He does that because they know where our buttons are. They know how to get to us. But by this time, David and heard Saul out there huffing and puffing and talking about he's going to blow their houses down like he the big bad wolf. And he said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that thinks he can defy the armies of the living God? Who is this? Who is this? Because you got to look at the devil. Even though Goliath, Big G, was nine feet tall, he was nothing in the eyesight of God. Even though David was little David, you know, they say, I think the, the, um, the scholars say he was between 15 and 19. So he was just getting started. He might have been his full size. He might not. But he had, we weren't old enough to join the army. You had to be 20 years old to join the army. So he had to be less than that. But he wasn't his full size because you can get to 21, 25 and still be growing as a young man. He had somewhere to go. But God had in him something that he could use. And David got insulted. You know what? We got to get insulted when the devil comes for us. Because he thinks he can whoop us without a fight. I read somewhere that I want to be the woman that when I get up in the morning, my, heat, my feet hit the floor in the morning, the devil said, oh, no, she's up. And you know why? Because I got something that God can use. He knows that if I use what God gave me, what God has already instilled in me from the time that he created me, from the time that I was, before I was formed in the belly when he knew me. Before I came out the womb when he sanctified me, when he ordained me to be a prophet to the nations, that I had something that God could use. So I want to be that type of woman. When I open my eyes and get up in the morning and my feet hit the floor, the devil get to running because I'm coming for you. So I thank God for that 9 o'clock prayer. The prayer was that stay on the line in the morning. Because the devil don't know we coming for him. We're interceding. We're calling out the names of the people of God. We're calling out the names of sinners. We're calling out people who are sick. We're calling people into light out of darkness. We're decreasing his army. We're cutting him down from the root. Because in the morning, I got something that he can use. When he come out in the evening, I got something God can use. So back to the story. We can get back to the story. So... You know, his, the, uh, uh, David's old brother got at him, but David was already mad. He was already upset. He was like, this Philistine done got on my nerves, and here you come in my face. I know you're the oldest, but I ain't for it today. I'm not here for that today. I didn't come for it, and I'm not going to tolerate. What I do now, you go back to his conversation, talking to, talking to the people. What's going on? What's going to happen? Because he was talking to all the other warriors, and the king has said, you know, anybody who can defeat this man, he'll get riches. His father won't have taxes. I'll get my daughter to marry him. David didn't come down there for that. He came down to deliver some cheese sandwiches. That's what he came for. He came to see his brothers and wish them well. But God has something that he could use and send him on an assignment. 
So while he got the talking, it got back to the king. And then he come before the king. Anybody ever, ever, ever start talking and got yourself in trouble with your big mouth? Say something. Then you're going to have to prove what you said. Anybody ever had an opportunity to have to back up what you said? Had to put up or shut up? Anybody ever had that happen? Well, I'm just going to, I'm just going to. I, I had an opportunity. Well, I had to back up what I said. I had to put up or shut up. But I'm going to tell you something. I had something that God could use. So I don't know what it is that people keep underestimating David. He came before the king and he said, you know, well, you ain't got to worry about this. I got this. He kept talking. I got this. I can kill this man. I don't, know, I don't know if he was five foot five, five foot nine, six feet, six five, but he won nine feet. It still was an uneven fight. I don't know how long they was on was. I don't know how, how, how much he could, you know, swing on the giant. I don't know. I don't know about that. But I know he had something that God could use. Something that could reach the giant. I, they always used to tell us that your arms are too short, too short to box with God. So nevertheless, it don't matter how tall the giant is, how wide he is, how strong he is, how long his arms drag on the ground. His arms are too short to box with God. So he got out there talking and he convinced Saul. He said, I can do this. And Saul said, okay, you can go and I'm giving you my blessing. The Lord be with you. And sometimes folks bless you, but when he turned right around and tried to put his stuff yeah, on David. Right. And people would do that. They'll put their stuff on you. They're, they trying to encourage you. They trying to push you. They trying to get you to the next level. But they trying to give you that stuff. But God got some stuff for you. You got to use what God got for you. I can't worry about some Mother Bradford's anointing. I got to go in my anointing that God got for me. I can't worry about pastor's anointing. I got to go in the anointing God got for me. He don't give me to operate the same way he give pastor. We married, we got children, we've been living together a long time. Different anointing. Because God got something in me that he can use. God used the pastor in a certain way. He used missionary in a certain way, preacher in a certain way. But God got something in you. You ain't got to have a title. He got something in you that he can use. I don't care how old you are, how young you are. God got something in you that he can use. You might be on your bed of affliction and God still got something in you that he can use. My godmother had diabetes for all my life that I know of. And it, she used to go to church and go and do stuff, but at some point she was at home in her bed. Rarely did she get out of her bed. But I'm going to tell you, she started a ministry. She would send birthday cards to the saints, to their children, and it made them feel good, just up out the blue, when you think ain't nobody thinking about you. It made us feel good that she was on her bed of affliction, but she was thinking about us. God has something in you that he can use. You don't know who you're encouraging with your words. Just, your, just you showing up and supporting. You don't know what God is doing in you. But you better ask God, what is it in me that you can use? So... He gets in front of, you know, Saul tried to put that stuff on him. He can't even walk. He can't even walk. He can't move forward. And that happens to us. We try to take on so-and-so's anointing. We try to take on so-and-so's prayer. Pray your own prayer. Have a relationship with the Lord. Talk to him yourself. Let him talk to you. you we always looking for a word through somebody. And they got a word. God uses them. I'm not discounting the preachers and the missionaries and the prophets. But God will talk to you. Jesus went to the cross so the veil could be rent, so we could talk to him and he could talk to us. Yeah. Let him talk to you. He will do it. Yeah. In an audible voice. Yeah. He'll tell you what he wants you to do. He'll lead and guide you. He'll order your footsteps. Yeah. Yeah. He'll tell you what he wants you to do, and then he'll open up the way for you to do it. Yeah. Ask me how I know. So we got to make sure that we ain't taking on other folks' stuff or trying to go in their anointing. God got something for us yeah. to do. Yeah. He got a place for us to be. Yeah. He got something that he wants us to overcome so others can see I use whoever I want, however I want, whenever I want, and not when you expect it. Yeah. Yeah. This man challenged the armor for 40 days. The armed trained professionals, yeah. grown men. They had been trying to fight. He challenged them for 40 days and 40 nights. And here come this little boy with cheese sandwiches. 
We've been out there with the sheep. Talking to the Lord. Because that's one thing I know about David. He talked to the Lord. He got too many songs in the Bible for us not to know that he talked to the Lord. That he pleaded with the Lord and he asked for his advice. He asked for his hand touch. He asked for his anointing. He asked for his covering. And God honored him because they had a relationship. They talked about he was a man after God's own heart. And for a long time, I didn't understand that. I thought that they mean he was a man who thought like God. But no, he chased the Lord. He let him know how he loved him. He wooed the Lord because he wanted a better relationship. He wanted an intimate relationship with the Lord. You know how you, you're married and you get, you know, you have a significant other, whatever. They, sometimes they're talking out loud, but sometimes they whisper. They saying stuff they don't want other people to hear. Because that's an intimate relationship. And that's what we have to have with the Lord. We got to have an intimate relationship with him. We looking for folks to tell us over the pulpit, God said you ought to go out and do this. You need to do this and give us every step of the way. But if you talk to him, if you walk with him, if you let him lead you and guide you, He'll begin to speak to you in your spirit. He'll begin to talk to you in the midnight hour. While you're resting, he'll put stuff in your spirit. While you're praying, he'll begin to soothe those things that are irritating you. You got to have an intimate relationship with him. Let's get back to the story. I done got off track. Yeah, let me, let me come on back. So he had to take that stuff off. And then he went back to what he knew worked. Because he already had to convince Saul. He told him about the lion and the bear. And that he had to fight while he was out there with the sheep. What you thought he was out there with the sword with the uh, tin and the sheep? He wasn't out there with no sword and the shield. But God had something that he could use. He had prepared him for this battle while he was yet in the field with the sheep. He had prepared him before he got to the war to come and defeat the enemy. So he had to take all that stuff off. And that's what we got to do. We got to take off stuff that people putting on us. You know, I, I, people, you know, they, you, you are great this and you are great that. Okay, whatever God say, I'm just going to keep serving the Lord today. I'm just going to keep coming to church. I'm just going to keep singing in the choir. I'm just going to keep serving on the usher board. I'm just going to keep serving on the hospitality committee. I'm just going to do whatever the Lord say do. Because elevation comes from God. People start talking to us and we start trying to walk in in an anointing that we have not yet received. That God has not put on us yet. People put that on us. But we have not. God has not put it on us. We got to walk in the anointing that we have. So what he did was took off the stuff that Saul put on him, what was weighing him down. What was stopping his progress. What was stopping him from moving forward. And he picked up what God had already given him. His staff. Because that rod and that staff, they come for me. Hallelujah. He picked up five smooth stones. Because God is the rock of my salvation. Hallelujah. And put them in his satchel. And made his trip on to the giant. To his destiny. <laughs> pastor been talking about destiny he made his way on to destiny because this was the beginning of what God had already destined him to do so he begins the when he gets to Goliath big G when he gets to big G little David come up to him and he like what this what y'all send me I mean begin yelling and cursing discounting who he is and I said this before but you better not discount my God Goliath is looking at David, but he ain't looking at who's with David. Yeah. Hallelujah. Saul already told him, and the Lord be with you. Yeah. So he looking at little David. He looking at him with his staff and with his satchel, with his five smooth stones. And he was like, I know you didn't. This is what y'all doing? This is what y'all doing? And David began to testify and prophesy the demise of Big G. This is what I'm about to do. I'm about to kill you, and I'm going to take your head. You know how Goliath was talking about, you're going to become my servants, and, we, and you're going to serve us. He put a little extra on it, and I'm defining the, the, the uh, armies of the Israelites. And then David got some oomph from battle. He kicked in on him. I'm not just going to kill you, but I'm going to cut your head off. 
And listen, let me tell you, God will give you the strength to cut the head of the enemy off. The enemy will come up against you and try to attack you and make you feel like you can't do this. I can't make it through this. It's too much for me, but God is your strength. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's a present help in the time of trouble. And he will give you the strength and the energy and the anointing to cut the head off the enemy. So, he walked up to him. I told you, he testified and he prophesied. And God is not a man that he will lie. No, the son of man that he should repent. And the word of God is true. And if God gave it for you to do, it shall be done. So, he took off all that stuff. He walked up to him. And here go the giant jumping. Let me, tell you, well, let me tell you what we can't do. When the devil jumps at us, we can't flinch. They used to play this game when I was younger. <laughs> and they would not, they, I think they do it in gangs too sometimes. We weren't in no gangs, but, you know, we were just doing stuff. And they would punch at you, and you couldn't flinch. If you flinch, you lose. It wasn't no big thing, but if you flinch, you lose. What we can't do is when the devil jump at us, we can't flinch. We can't fall back. We can't give Shaking. We got to stand on the word of God. The word of God says we're more than conquerors. We're more than conquerors. Not just we win this fight, but then we got some overtaking to do. We got some spoils that we're going to do. We got something to do after we win the fight. We got work to do. God has in something, something in us that he can use. He's trying to use you. He don't care that you, what, what committee you on, what committee you ain't on. He don't care that you're a pew member. But God got something in you that he can use. And we got to realize that we got to seek him every day for that. Let me finish this story up. Um, so after little David took out, you know, he, he get up to the giant and the giant jump at him. He jumped back, jump up, swing the rock, and hit him in the forehead. Yeah. <laughs> little David's a mess. I like little David. I have him on my team in the day. He's some good backup. Because I don't need nobody who's going to turn to run when, when it get real. I need somebody who's going to get down when it get real. I need somebody who's going to come on with the come on when it's time. God needs some folks with some saints who's going to come on with the come on when it's time. When the devil start attacking, some folks going to get on the prayer line. Some folks going to start calling out the name of Jesus. We ain't going to wait till we get to a place we can kneel, but we'll call on Jesus out at the grocery store. We'll call on Jesus in the parking lot. We'll call on Jesus at our job. We'll call on Jesus anywhere, anytime. You ready to get this thing started? You ready? I'm ready. What Tiffany had to say, we ready. Because we got something that he can use. I'm just saying. Yes. So when he began, when he killed his giant, then he ran up on him uh -huh. and take Goliath's sword. Mind you, he can't wear Saul's uniform, Saul's armor. Saul's smaller than Goliath, but he can't wear his stuff. He can't even walk in it. But he got the strength to take Goliath's sword, the giant's sword. The enemy sword. Yeah. What is to be? Yeah. He got the strength and the, and the energy to take his sword and cut his head off. God will do that for you. Yeah. So, Monet, you smile, but God will give you the energy to cut the, energy, the devil's head off. Little ladies, little, little girls back here, God going to give you the en energy and the anointing to cut the devil's head off. Yeah. It don't matter how big you are, how small you are. And when God anoints you, you can cut the head of the enemy off. He ain't got no power. He already dead. The word had already gone forth. He's already dead. It ain't nothing else he can do. Just cut his head off. So he cut his head off. And then when everybody saw it, <laughs> all these people, they ain't even been saying nothing. Goliath been out there talking bad. I done had one of them friends before. They get you in the fight. Like they out there talking bad, what they gonna do? They ain't doing nothing but talking. They can't fight to save their life, but since you there, then they got some help. When they saw Goliath was dead, then they take out running. No, 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 no. We had a deal. Goliath said, the one you backing up, the one you on the side of, the one you choose to be a part of his team, that you're going to be our servants. And then he put some emphasis on it when he said about y'all with us. 
but y'all are going to serve us. You're going to serve us. But let me tell you, David could not have done any of that by his own strength. It was nothing that he could have done of his own. He didn't even know he came to do it. He didn't know that that's what he was going to do that day. When he left early in the morning, that's what the scripture said, when he left early in the morning to bring these cheese sandwiches down to his big brothers. He didn't even know he was coming to watch the fight. He just showed up making a lunch run. He was doing Uber Eats, Grubhub. What's the rest of them stuff? Y'all know what I'm talking about. He was delivering food. Start ass, yeah. He was on assignment for lunch. But he came down there to win a battle. He came down there to walk in his destiny. He, God had equipped him for that day, for that time, for that purpose. To fight that fight. To defeat that giant. To become the king that he had already anointed him to be. Let me tell you something. Back in chapter 16, Samuel came down to Jesse's house in Bethlehem. And he thought he was going to anoint a king. Looked at the big brothers. They tall, they big, they at full size. They looking nice. They clean. And he said, surely. Look at Eliab, the first one. Surely, this is the one. And God said, you know what? You looking at the wrong thing. You looking on outward appearance. I don't care what they look like. I don't care what they look like. I don't care if they clean. I don't care if they come from good stock. And God is saying the same thing to you. I don't care where you came from. I don't care what you've already done. I don't care what you look like. It's not about how good you look. It's not about how nice you're set up. But where is your heart? Because God is looking on the heart. We're looking how people look. Pastor look good over there. No, he dressed all up. But if he ain't a man of God, he's he not a good pastor. Because he's not a man of God. Thank God he's a man of God. Bless you, man of God. But God is not looking at what kind of shoes you got on. Your Manolos and, and yo-yos and whatever else. He ain't looking at that. He don't care if you can afford Jordans. He don't care if you can afford... A thousand dollar Louis Vuitton bag. He don't care about that. You can look good as you want. You can be dressed up on the outside and dirty as can be on the inside. God can't use that. He can't put nothing in dirty vessels. He can't use that. We got stuff that he can use, but he can't use us if we dirty. He can't use us if we broken. He can't use us like that. But God know how to clean us up. God know how to mend our broken hearts. God know how to fix us to a place where he can use us. Because he's already ordained that we got something he can use. I was just thinking back in the, in, you know, in the Bible. And he created all of us with something that he can use. Jeremiah declares, again, I mentioned this. Before he formed us in the belly, he already knew who we were. He had already sanctified us. He had already ordained us. He used so many people in the Bible. You know, he, he always gives us. Abraham had his faith that he could use. Moses had his obedience that God could use. Job had his trust that God could use. Peter had a fight that God could use. Joseph had integrity that God could use. Nehemiah had sincerity that God could use. Esther had courage that God could use. Joshua had attention to detail because it took something to go around that wall seven times on one day. One day for, for, seven, for six days and seven times on the last day. And to be quiet, to give good instruction. But Joshua had attention to detail that God could use. The widow woman had a pot of oil that God could use. Elijah had a word. He said, by my word. That God could use. Paul had an assignment that God could use. Mary had a womb that God could use. And Jesus had a life that God could use. Because if he hadn't given his life, I wouldn't have life today. But I thank God that we got something that God can use. He can use it where he want to and how he want to. You might not know what it is, but that's where you got to have that intimate relationship with the Lord. You got to walk with him and talk with him. You got to let him speak to you. You got to lay down with him and get up with him. And then he'll reveal the purpose that he has for your life. He'll reveal what it is that he can use in you. I'm telling you, we think sometimes where we come from, 
matters. And we, I haven't told you yet what David can use. Have I? I ain't said what David can use. We think it's that slingshot, don't we? We think it's the rocks. We think that it was his fight. He was ready to pop out. We think that. And it could have been his youth. Could be. I don't know. Could have been his quick thinking. Maybe. Could have been his fight. Possibility. But again, we go back to chapter 16. What God had already prepared him with the anointing. God had already given him the anointing. It was a setup from the beginning. He anointed him to get in that place to come before the king so he could take the king's place without the king even knowing it. And God would do that. He always has a plan. He has a setup. He got a, he got a way that he's doing stuff. Every step means something. Every time he moves us to somewhere else, when, he, when his dad put, told him to take that cheese sandwich down there that day, that was a step. When he got down there and Goliath was out there hollering and screaming and huffing and puffing like he going to blow the house down. And Dave was like, not about to hurt my chinny chin chin. Not going to happen on, on my watch. Not, not today. What they say, not today, say. Not going to happen on my watch. He was already set up to be the king that God had destined him to be. He was already set up for that. To come before the king. We talked about Joseph so much in, um, in Sunday school, I believe. And they talked about all the different things he went through. How they sold him into slavery. And he went to somebody else's house. And then he got sent to jail. He went down there and met the butler and the baker. And then he got, they forgot about him. Then he ended up before the king. And ended up in the place where God had already told him he was going to be. That God had already predestinated for him. And God got predestination for each and every one of us. I'm, I'm, I'm done. But I just want to say this. Whatever it is that you got in you, you got something that God can use. Don't discount what God has created. He said everything that he created is good. He don't care where you came from. And I said that before. He don't care what you look like, what your title is. If you're a talk or witness to, some, to somebody, till they say, what must I be do to be saved? If you sing, sing to the glory and honor of God. If you pray, pray the devil's out of people and pray heaven down. If you're a cheater, cheat the devil out of a soul. If you're a fighter, get on the battlefield for the Lord. You got something that God can use. He created us all. It was not different. I mean, not the same, different. Because he got different places he want to use us. He want to use some of us in government. Because we need that. He want to use some of us in the schoolroom Because we need that. He want to use some of us in the prisons because we need that. He want to use some of us in the hospital because we need that. It ain't just for us to come up here and speak. We can do that all day and all night. Y'all know I got plenty of words to say. And probably need to cut some of them down. But God got something else that he want me, that he can use in me. When I get out there in the world and somebody is hurting, somebody don't know what to do, somebody don't know who Jesus is, he got something in me he can use. And it ain't just me, it's you too. He's got something in you, Sister Catherine, that he can use. While you're going to dialysis, you can testify that God brought you up to this farm. How he's brought you out so many times. He's got something in you that he can use. God has something that we can use, but we got to ask him, God, what is it in me that you want to use? We can't tell him what it is we want him to use. Now that's another thing. We can't tell God how he want, we, we want him to use us. We got to be obedient to his will. We got to walk according to his way. I pray every day, God, let me guide my footsteps, order my footsteps, my mind, my thinking, my tongue, whatever my hands do. Don't let me do things that I shouldn't do. Don't let me go places I shouldn't go. Don't let me even speak things I shouldn't speak. Don't let me think things I shouldn't think. Because I want to do what you want me to do. We all been created for a purpose. We got something that God can use. I, I can't say it enough because sometimes we discount what God has given us because we're not in the spotlight. I'm telling you, I don't be want to be in the spotlight. I be sweating when I'm in the spotlight. See? But I sing in the back of that choir all day long. I sit in the back and usher if I need to. I'm, I'm going to have to take my shoes off and do it, but I do it. If that's what the Lord tells me to do. Because I just want to be used by God the way he wants me to be used. 
I was listening to the the uh, second Saturday meeting yesterday, and it was so good. I wish y'all would have got on there. Sister Westbrook was so good talking about stewardship. And that our time is something that we need to be a steward of. God has given us a time frame, a life. We don't know when it's going to end. But how do we use it? We don't value it. We'll go to work when we're sick and we'll stay at home because we said we didn't feel good. Oh, well, COVID is going on. And I know they've been telling us to do that. I'm just saying, you know, where our faith is. We discount the things of the church. We'll let things go that God has, has expressed set for us to do and do those things out there that folks don't care nothing about us if something happened to us on our job they're going to get somebody to take our place if we don't buy this at Walmart Kroger got it but we're going to be right in there with all the people doing everything we have dead out there I, I remember you know, before the pandemic they would have Black Friday folks out there all early in the morning you can't get up and go to work in the morning you late every day but at 5 o'clock you was in that line trying to get what you wanted. They call for Sunday school, prayer and Sunday school at 9 o'clock and you can't make it here then. But 5 o'clock, you was at Target. You was at Macy's. Trying to get what you want. You need to get what God wants you to have. Because God got something in you that he wants to use. He got something deep down inside of you that he wants to bring out. And you ain't got to fall down the floor. You ain't got to have this mic for him to use it. You ain't got to wear no robe for him to use it. Sometimes our ministry is to our family. We got loved ones who go in the opposite way on purpose. That don't stop us from talking to them, witnessing to them, praying for them, calling out their name in prayer. Some of them need our, their name called out. Some of them need us to lay hands on them while they sleeping to pray over them. Go by their dough knob and just put some oil on them. Why they gone to work or, or gone to school, just put some oil on the pillow. Go in there and touch your windows and touch your doors and keep the devil out. God got something in us we can use, but you got to allow him to use it. Now I say this, if you're not saved, you're not equipped to use what God gave you to use. Because you're walking in darkness and God want to bring you into the marvelous light. And some of us are saved. But we're not walking in the fullness of our purpose. We're not going to our destiny. Because we're going away from God. what God wants us to do. God told you to be a prayer warrior. You don't want to get on the prayer line. You don't want to get up to pray. I'll read the scripture. I'll be at the door. God wants you to pray. You got a word of prayer in your mouth. That's going to deliver somebody. You got a word of encouragement in your mouth. That's going to bring somebody over. You got healing in your hands and you won't pray for nobody. You won't lay hands on them. You ain't got to speak in tongues. I work in an environment and I go in there all the time. And stuff jump off and people act crazy and I just say, Lord, let your peace rule. We, are, we in there cleaning folks up, Lord, let your peace rule. Yeah. Let the peace of God rule. Touch them, God, in the name of Jesus. And I don't be hollering out. I don't be, sometimes I don't even say it out loud. Because God can hear your thoughts. Yeah. He know your heart. But I just want to encourage you today to let God use you the way he want to use you. Don't discount yourself. Because God has something in you, each and every one of you. Young man, God got something in you that he can use. It's more than playing them drums. He got something in you that he can use. My son's over there. God got something in you that he wants to use. More than playing these instruments in church. That's fine, well, and good. Thank God for your service. But God got something on the inside that he want to use on the outside. God has something in each and every one of you. I know I keep saying it over and over again, but I want you to understand that we got to yield ourselves to the Spirit of God. We got to give up and submit to the will of God. God, nevertheless, not I, but it's you that live in me. God, use me. Come on and lift your hands. And just say, God, use me. Lord, use me today. Well, whatever your service is, God, whatever you have me to do, use me, God. Turn my heart and mind to you, God, that I might be used for your purpose, God. Whatever your destiny for me is today, God, I want to be used by you. Lead and guide me, God. 
Bind the spirit that will be distracted. Bind the spirit that will be discouraged, God. Bind the spirit that will turn away from you, God. But God, give me a willing heart and a willing mind and a willing spirit, God. I say yes to you today. Come on and tell him yes. Yes to your will, God. Yes to your way, God. Yes down on the inside, God. I surrender to you, God. Use me for your service. However you want to, God. Whenever you want to, God. Do it in me now, God. Have your way in me. I give up myself to you, God. I lay everything aside, God. And I give up to you. Use me for your service. God, I submit to your way. And I thank you, God, for speaking to me. I thank you, God, for your honor of using me for your service. I thank you, God, for you calling me to a destiny. I thank you, God, for you calling me to service. I thank you, God. Hallelujah. Ooh, God, I thank you. Hallelujah. Who glory to God. life. I praise your name. I honor you, God, in Jesus' name. Thank God. Amen. Come on and bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, 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 oh. Come on, lift those hands all over this place. Hallelujah. You got hands that God can use. Hallelujah. Lift the hands. Lift your hands. God, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You know, before we move on, but I noticed something that she said. Thank God for First Lady. Amen. We celebrate you. Amen. Thank God. But I noticed something that she said about David. I want you to just really pay close attention to it because it's powerful. She said that he couldn't, he couldn't fit Saul's stuff. He wasn't anointed to do it. He wasn't anointed to wear it. But what's powerful was what's powerful about it that she he went to the big G. And after he had hit him, he had sunk the rock in his head, the, the, the powerful rock in his head. This is powerful, y'all picks up something that was much much heavier than that of Saul and cuts off Goliath's head y'all get it on the way home but what I came to tell you is that what's meant for you to pick up what's meant for you to defeat God will allow you to defeat it because you are anointed for it. You are anointed for whatever you're going through. And I came to tell you that you will defeat it. Hallelujah. Lift those hands and give God praise. Hallelujah. My God, my God. Hallelujah. You got something that God can use. My, 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 my. Hallelujah. Thank you. My Lord, my Lord. No matter what it looks like, when an enemy 
shows up and tries to take you out because of what's in you you shall prevail but here's the here's the here's the whole key you gotta have the mind for it prep your mind for the enemy one thing that I can say about David he was always prepared look at it when she went back and she started talking about uh, uh, in chapter 16 she started talking about some things but then she mentioned the, the, the lion and the bear so in other words Goliath, Goliath I don't believe could have stood up to the lion and the bear but David did here's my whole this is what I'm trying to tell you you are prepped for it. If you prep yourself, then you can you can do it. But you got to set your mind to it. Listen, I hear them all the time, and I don't mean to get on no, nobody's nerve, but but I gotta tell it. The rich folks said you need to have uh, 13 uh, ways forms of income. Well, I disagree. Let me tell you why I disagree. Because they didn't start with 13. For, uh, ways of income, income they did not they started out with one focus see the problem is the enemy will tell you to start out real big when you ought to start it out real small and that's what we are right now we got to start out real small you got to get you one focus and God will provide the rest that's all I came to tell you you, you got to get you one focus and God will provide them all the rest when everything else shows up Listen to me now. When all the rest star shows up, then the other forms of income will show up. But you gotta have the mind to start one way. Listen. And I'm getting ready to get out of here. But with the money that you have, I don't know where I'm going right this way. There's no way in the world that you can have 13 forms of income with the money that you have right now. Where you gonna put it? If you got a dollar, how you gonna spend it up 13 ways? Invest it 13 ways. You gotta start somewhere. You gotta have one mind. And when you have that one mind, who y'all I'm excited? Because there's something in me that God can use. Hallelujah. But you gotta set yourself to, in a way. Set yourself ready for the battle. And when it's time that you can go forth. And you can start to push through. And then let the other stuff come later on. Hallelujah. But you got to start somewhere. Lift those hands for me real quick. You don't get ready to get out of here. But I want you to just give God some glory. Hallelujah. Give God some glory. For what he's about to do in your life. He's about to turn some stuff around. Hallelujah. Give God some glory. Yeah, bye, bye, bye. So that thing that you got on this week, that thing that you need to accomplish on this week, hallelujah. Listen, go to God about it. Hallelujah. And trust God that he's going to turn it around for you. Listen, I heard it said, don't, don't try to do what other folk do. Hallelujah. Don't try to use nobody else's anointing. But you have a personal, you need to have a personal relationship with God. So that your anointing is tailor-made. Hallelujah. There's nobody anointing that is like yours. Hallelujah. It don't even equal up to yours. Hallelujah. But you got to understand that what God has in you is much, much powerful than what you think. Hallelujah. All you have to do is put your hand to the plow. And when you put your hand to the plow, God will start to work that thing. Hallelujah. Work that thing. He'll start to work it for you. In the name of Jesus. Listen, I'm getting out of the way. Uh, Sister Jennifer is coming. Hallelujah. She's coming. You might go and sit down, y'all. I'm just I'm just excited. Hallelujah. When, when I get excited, look out. Y'all don't need to hear another message. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 
my God. But that's something down on the inside of me that's telling me to go ahead. <laughs> Y'all remember that old song? That's something down on the inside of me that's telling me to go ahead. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost, have your way in somebody right now. Hallelujah. Come on, Sister Jennifer. Hallelujah. Ooh, thank God for the word on today. Hallelujah. Had Carter back there laughing. He was listening. Amen. Thank God for the word. Thank God for the first lady. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. On this, um, on Wednesday, March the 3rd, I'm sorry, on Wednesday, March the 16th at 630 following um, prayer, it will be the Bible band, the spiritual renewal. Amen. What a mighty word to go with the Bible study too. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And also, um, Day of Love, we'll be honoring our first lady, Lady Marcini Par Marcina Parham. Amen. This is Sunday, March the 20th. Amen. Please see Missionary Pearly Ingram. Amen. After um, service or any time in between. Amen. And also, um, Tennessee Central 2M1 Conference, um, March the 22nd through the 25th. Um, Prelate Bishop Porter plays state headquarters in Jackson, Tennessee. Amen. Also, um, morning worship service, Sunday, um, March the 27th. Amen. C CWC meeting following benediction. Amen. Also, um, um, Sister Belinda needs to meet with all the ladies um, following the um, meet with all the hospitality ladies directly at the service she said for 10 minutes it is very important please meet with her I also um, as long as I get your number we can all I can text you um, I did talk to Dr. Cobb in reference to um, our um, weight loss program um, our diabetes uh, any anything she said it's beneficial for everything and um so i will be giving you update information following that amen on today just make sure i have your number amen and also um this was passed out this is the bible study um make sure you get one today um make sure you get one of these today for bible study amen also let's not forget today is missionary bradford's birthday on today amen um brother alvin dale powell birthday on today amen has sister sylvia henderson's birthday on the 11th and her sister um our mother rebecca sue dennis birthday wow that's pretty awesome <laughs> And we just want to sing happy birthday. We know everybody's birthday is coming up. We got a lot of March birthdays. Amen. Even Alexa's birthday is in March. Amen. So let's sing happy birthday to all the birthday people. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear members. Happy birthday to you. And many more may god bless you amen and also wedding anniversaries it's um brother james brendan jokes and sister lashonda jokes amen on march today amen happy anniversary y'all amen and also um we have a uh, march the 30th will be brother um aldrico allen and sister brandy allen birthday i mean wedding anniversary um also um let's just keep in mind let's stay prayed up i was thinking um prayer is good amen thank god for prayer amen thank god for prayer um please follow all the announcements accordingly and f um, have any questions you can let me know amen let us stand Let's lift our hands to the Lord. God, we thank you today. We thank you for this awesome service. We thank you for all that we've heard. And God, we ask you to help us and that we, we, we take something from the message back home with us, something that will build us and make us better than what we already are. And God, and we'll thank you. And we honor you for what you're about to do in our lives. Lord, we thank you for the, the renewed release. And God, we thank you for setting free right now.
even those that are watching online God you ask you to touch each one of those God God heal and deliver and set free right now on this week God God turn something around turn the turn the hands of the enemy back God take them off of somebody right now in the name of Jesus Lord we speak wholeness <clears throat> Lord we speak wholeness today we speak wholeness right now a complete deliverance in, in, in the name of Jesus and Lord we'll tell you thank you Lord as we leave this place Lord as we log off God from this this service God we ask you to keep the enemy off the road and God keep the dangerous animals out of the road and Lord we'll tell you thank you bring her back at the appointed time with our hands lifted up in Jesus name we pray thank God amen amen y'all have a blessed one